So what's up, people? This is Robert Bassano. Man, I hate being such a fucking hypocrite. I always get on you guys' ass, man. There's people who focus on NASA saying you're in love with NASA. Well, man, shit. They happen to be the one damn defense agency on the planet that's controlling everything. If you think the National Security Agency, Department of Defense, CIA, National Reconnaissance Office, National Geospatial Agency, all of the armed services, if you think they're all their separate entities, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. They are all creations and departments and divisions and agencies and organizations created by NASA. Every single one of them needs products and services from other community members which are operated, mandated, managed by NASA. Human intelligence, signal intelligence, electronic intelligence, communications intelligence, ground intelligence, geospatial intelligence, all requires some sort of process that NASA created. That's just the gist of it. Federal law and code defines NASA as a defense agency. A defense agency. The Department of Defense is exactly what it is. It's a department. Okay? And um, I want to focus on this guy. Donald R. Pettit. I'm not even going to call him a doctor. Because he don't deserve the respect. But I'm going to let you hear a short little sound clip. I don't want to play the video from this conference he gave in New York, Luminance 2012. You can go look it up yourself. Go to photoshelter.com. Look up Luminance. He was a speaker, and he spoke. He was a photographer. He was a science officer on a few of the IS, uh, on a few of the missions to the ISS. This guy's sole job was to take pictures. Okay, now. He says something interesting in this guest speaking skit. And I call it a skit because it's fucking poor acting. And um, I wish I could show the video, but I don't want to suffer a copyright strike on this whole thing. You know how YouTube and Google are fucking protecting all these people who think that their material they put up they own it. They don't. Fuck, nobody own. You don't own shit that you put up on video. Nothing you put on YouTube. All the music, all that. That shit don't belong to the people they claim it belongs to. All that shit belongs to the United States Corporation Company. Copyrights, patents, trademarks, you name it. So you want to ch challenge a copyright strike? Okay. With YouTube, use federal code. And that copyright strike will be fucking lifted. Because the people who are claiming to own it, they don't fucking own it. Alright? And the people making the most money from the monetization is actually YouTube. It ain't you. Because I don't see any millionaires uh, putting up videos on YouTube. But, let's stay on target. I'm going to play this sound clip for you guys. And I want you to listen to what this guy says. Specifically regarding how fast... The ISS is actually moving, okay, in relation to the Earth when he when he has when he's tasked with taking photos of the Earth, okay, and then I'm going to show you a comparison of what he's saying, so you can get a general idea of what he's referring to, because I'm going to tell you here right now. This guy's a fucking liar. And I'm going to prove it to you. Remember, my motto is, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Okay? So let me play the sound clip so you guys can hear this. And then we're going to do, we're going to try to do the best side-by-side -side comparison 
so that you can have a visual based on what he's saying. Okay? Just hang on for a second here, people. Amazing, Amazing collection, collection of windows. windows. We have, we have seven, seven windows, windows looking nader, nader at, at Earth. Earth. You can, you can see, see 360 degrees around. around. You can look, look at the limb, limb of Earth, Earth. and we fill it with cameras. cameras. We'll have six, seven, seven eight cameras, cameras all set up a little differently, all set up with different lenses. lenses. Earth, Earth goes, goes by really fast. fast. You, you go 24,000 miles in 90, 90 minutes. minutes. And, if and if there's something you want to take a picture of, maybe your hometown or whatever, you have three to five seconds to get that shot off or you'll have to wait another 11 days till you're over your hometown again and so we'll have all these cameras set up there's no time to change lenses there's no time to change settings if you want to capture images of a sunset and just as an example sunset here on earth half a degree width of the lunar disk or the solar disk takes two minutes to set in space, in space, it takes seven, takes seven seconds. seconds. So, so you, you don't, don't want to even, to even take the time to turn your camera, camera on. on. We, we keep our cameras on all the time. We never turn them off. So you heard what he said. He did a comparison. Uh, if you're on the surface of the Earth, sunset takes about two minutes. But in, re in perspective of being on the ISS, it takes seven seconds. Okay? Now... I want you to keep that in mind. On Earth, if you're on the surface of the Earth, about two minutes. If you're on ISS, it takes seven seconds. Seven fucking seconds. He says the Earth is moving by really fast. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a side-by-side -side of ISS live stream and try to play the audio okay I actually know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the ISS live stream and then we're gonna let this guy talk okay so you can hear what he's saying and have a visual so you can decide if what he's saying is correct okay hang on for a second on space station try to match that be fast you go 24,000 miles in 90 minutes. And if there's something you want to take a picture of, maybe your hometown or whatever, you have three to five seconds to get that shot off, or you'll have to wait another 11 days till you're over your hometown again. And so we'll have all these cameras set up. There's no time to change lenses. There's no time to change settings. If you want to capture images of a sunset, and just as an example, sunset here on Earth, half a degree width of the lunar disk or the solar disk, takes two minutes to set. In space, it takes seven seconds. So you don't want to even take the time to turn your camera on. We, we keep our cameras on all the time. We never turn them off. Now, you guys saw the live ISS view. You saw the Earth moving below. He says the Earth moves by very fast. He also says they keep their cameras on all the time. They don't ever turn them off. They're always on. They have tons of cameras in the cupola. That little fishbowl viewing type of deck. Right? They got cameras in every port, every window. They're on 24-7 because they don't want to miss a single shot, right? They don't want to miss a shot. These bad boys are, are programmed to take pictures on their own if need to. Autofocus, you name it. Take a little bit of video, high definition with those DSLRs, okay? Some of you got these DSLRs. You know what they're capable of doing, right? But the earth is moving by really fast. You got maybe three to five seconds to take a zoomed in telephoto shot of your hometown. Three to five seconds. Man, the average camera operator, it takes longer than that just to focus in on the shot. Right? But the ISS is moving so fast that you're not going to be able to get that shot. Right? 
you had 245 miles above the surface of the earth and you only have a maximum of five seconds to take a photo of your hometown or you got to wait another 11 days right and you saw that video of how fast the ISS is moving really people really does it look like you only have three to five seconds to take a photo if you're flying over the continental United States with a super telephoto lens 350 millimeter or higher maybe 500 600 800 millimeter that's what he said then he says that the Sun the Sun set seven seconds which means the sunrise seven seconds so what I'm going to show you right now is a sunrise and sunset supposedly from the ISS and I've got the clock I've got this YouTube video pulled up and I want you to see the clock so you can decide for yourself if you think that that sunrise and sunset takes seven seconds now what I want you to pay attention to is this because I know there are going to be a lot of naysayers and fucking video analysts who don't know shit about fucking analyzing video none, none of us really do we just we take a close detailed look at it and we developed our own analysis and assessment of you know what it may or may not be all right but these days in the age of computer generated imaging I think it's pretty clear this is a time-lapse video time-lapse video meaning this video was shot at normal speed and then it was sped up so I want you to take into account of what this guy says look at this time-lapse video and then remember we're gonna go back to the live ISS stream so you can see what supposedly is supposed to be the ISS live moving in real time because I don't think this guy was on the ISS I think he's he was reading from some sort of speech or presentation put before him and he was given these numbers to support the idea that something the size of a football field, a hundred yard long, hundred hundred yards long and fifty yards wide, is moving at fucking seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour at two hundred forty five miles above the surface of the earth. That's a crock of shit. But let's play this video so you can see for yourself. There goes the sunrise. All right? Let's look at the clock. All right? Remember, this is time lapse. Time lapse. So here we go. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Here comes the sunset. One. there you go there you go people that's what he was referring to okay so here we go this is supposed to be the ISS moving in real time at 17,500 miles an hour it's not time-lapse so Picture yourself in that module. You start to identify with the United States is from God knows what distance away from you on the horizon. So now you have time to prepare. You know, you're on the ISS. You know exactly when the fuck you're going to be passing over the United States. You know exactly what area of the United States you're going to be passing over. And you can be able to see 
New York, Florida, Colorado, California, before you even fucking get to it. Three to five seconds, people. Three to five seconds. That's what he said. He said the sunset at 17,500 miles an hour takes seven seconds. So I'm going to see right now if I can find a video showing the sunset in real time. Real time. And let's see if it really takes seven seconds like he said. And wouldn't you know it, people? Like I said, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. So I found a video from 2014 showing the ISS off to the right hand side, superimposed computer generated fucking image. <laughs> and this is supposed to be the sunset in real time. So we say the sunset is probably about a little bit above the horizon, all right? This is from live stream, ISS, real time. I want you to look at the clock. This video is 2 minutes and 38 seconds. This guy says, Mr. Donald Pettit, who has been up on the ISS, total amount of time, 191 days total, and all the missions he's been up there. He says the sun's, it takes 7 fucking seconds for the sun to set. He says, you got three to five seconds to shoot a photograph of maybe your hometown at 245 fucking miles above the surface of the earth. I think the only time this guy's been 245 miles from the surface of the earth is when he's fucking smoking weed. Because he hired in a motherfucker. He had to be high as a motherfucker. Because he sure as hell wasn't fucking at 245 miles at the ISS. And it ain't... it. it Perceptually, it's not fucking it. It's not moving that fast. Not at two hundred forty-five miles. Now maybe it's it's moving that fucking fast if it's lower than two hundred forty-five miles. Because if you're one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred fifty thousand feet feet above the surface of the Earth, moving in excess of twenty-two hundred miles an hour because that's how fast the SR-71 can fly you've got the F-22 Raptor that can fly probably what Mach 2 maybe Mach 3 maybe I don't know the specs on that some of you might want to check that out but if you're moving that fast and mapping the earth you damn right you got three to five seconds to take a photo but not at 245 miles when you have a wider range when it, of line of sight. When you can see more land, it's impossible. So watch this sunset. Pay attention to the clock, the timer. And here we go. There goes the sun. Seven seconds, people. <laughs> I still see the sun. Ooh Twelve seconds. I still see the sun. And the earth is supposedly moving. Right? This is live stream. Twenty-five seconds. I can still see the sun. Thirty seconds. I still see the sun. It looks like it's approaching horizon. Getting ready to set. Wow, Donald Pettit, it's 40 fucking seconds and I can still see the sun. I don't know where the fuck you were when you were taking them fucking photos, but you sure as hell were not on the fucking ISS, you lying ass motherfucker. Holy shit. Approaching one minute, people. One fucking minute and the sun still hasn't set with the ISS supposedly at 245 miles above the surface of the earth. Uh-huh. One minute, ten seconds. Yeah, Donald, you think you want to go back and retract that fucking statement you made at that fucking conference in 2012 saying that this, it takes seven seconds for the sun to set? At, at, at what level? At what angle was the sun at? 
because looking at this video from the ISS, it's approaching fucking a minute and 35 fucking seconds, and here we go. 40 seconds. 45 seconds. Sun is not completely gone. Sun is not complete. When we say sunset, we mean there ain't no fucking light at all. Zero. Zero. Looks like to me that, Mr. Pettit, it took two fucking minutes for the sun to set. Now, didn't you say, didn't you say, hold on, let's go back to the videotape, my favorite commentator, Mr. George Michaels, and see what he says. Okay, let's, I'm going to go back to your state, Mr. Pettit, so we can all hear what you had to fucking say about the sunset on the earth and the sunset on the ISS. Amazing collection of windows. We have seven windows looking nadir at earth. You can see 360 degrees around. You can look at the limb of earth and we fill it with cameras. We'll have six, seven, eight cameras all set up a little differently, all set up with different lenses. Earth goes by really fast. You go 24,000 miles in 90 minutes. And if there's something you want to take a picture of, maybe your hometown or whatever, you have three to five seconds to get that shot off, or you'll have to wait another 11 days till you're over your hometown again. And so we'll have all these cameras set up. There's no time to change lenses. There's no time to change settings. If you want to capture images of a sunset, and just as an example, sunset here on Earth, half a degree width of the lunar disk or the solar disk, takes two minutes to set. In space, it takes seven seconds. So you don't want to even take the time to turn your camera on. We, we keep our cameras on all the time. We never turn them off. So there you have it, people. I mean, they, he's not the only astronaut, man, caught lying. He's not the only astronaut. I mean, when they talk about taking these little civilian adventures, going to the edge of space, Felix Baumgartner jumping from the edge of space, you know, astronauts going into space, they got the majority of the people around the world fucking confused. They got them fooled. They got them tricked. Because you can pay 75, 80 grand to the Russians and they tell you, they'll tell you they'll take you up in a MiG-29 to the edge of space. Now the max altitude of the MiG-29, operating altitude that is, it's about 80,000 feet from the surface of the earth. Space, space begins at 328,000 feet. 84 feet from the surface of the earth so how the fuck could 80,000 feet be the edge of space you ain't fucking even close to the fucking edge you ain't even fucking halfway you're a quarter of the fucking way to space so how the hell could you be flying to the edge of space at 80,000 feet how could the you too be flying to the edge of space. How is that possible? You too ain't flying to the edge of space. That ain't fucking possible. That is not possible. The ISS is not in fucking space, according to Don Pettit, because if it's flying by that fucking fast, okay, in microgravity, it just happened to continue to keep its fucking momentum after 15 fucking years. It just happens to still be keeping its momentum of 17,500 miles an hour after 15 fucking years. Now, I'm not going to discount that this thing loses a mile and a half, two miles in altitude gain and has to be pushed back up into orbit. But there ain't no fucking way this thing can still be fucking pushing 17,000 miles an hour, constant fucking speed. 
Average 17,000. If we want to believe in gravity, the Earth's gravity is pull, trying to pull this fucking thing back down to the surface of the Earth, where it fucking belongs, where it's been for 15 years, 40 feet in the fucking aqua training tank. Come on, man. People, when they start using these terms, they use this language, you need to know exactly what they're referring to when they say space. Because Felix Baumgartner didn't jump from the edge of space. He was at 127,000 feet. That's not even halfway to the Kármán line, which is 100 kilometers, 328,084 feet. It's that fucking simple. It's that simple. It's that simple, people. There ain't no damn way. No way. I mean, seriously, there ain't no way, no way in hell. This guy is saying the sun on Earth that it takes two minutes for the sun to set, but on the ISS it takes seven seconds. You saw the video for yourself. You saw it. You saw the time lapse version where it took seven seconds, where they sped up the video, and then you saw the real time sunset, which took two fucking minutes. Just like he said, on the earth, it takes two minutes for the sun to set. On earth, standing on the fucking ground. But on the ISS, it takes seven seconds. Yeah, it takes seven seconds when you speed up the fucking video. Which means that his ass was on earth. <laughs> in a fucking image processing lab. With his fucking cameras. Telling the graphic processing uh, uh, architect, hey, speed up the video. Because I got to do a lecture on this whole shit, so I want to give people kind of a visual frame of reference. But he showed you still, he shows still videos. Still shots. He don't show any video. He's supposed to be the photographer up there. Man, it just, it just keeps getting better. This shit is getting better. Day after day, week after week with him. If you continue to do the searching, people. You're going to find where they're just getting fucking stumped. NASA just letting them just say whatever fuck they want them to say. Because they're leading up. I mean, this is going to blow open sooner than we thought. This is all going to blow open. Sooner than we thought. They're going to they're gonna fucking institute martial law. They're going to be a gun at your fucking front door everywhere you go. Especially if you're a flat earther. You're a threat. You're an absolute fucking threat. I was telling somebody this shit the other day. Bad. What's going to happen? And the reason why I think Obama knows and he's stressed out about it is that they he was told by the DOD and Charlie Bowden. We can't just come out and un come out in the open and undo seventy five years, a hundred years of fucking lies. He goes, it'll cause problems for every world leader that we know who is in partnership with us regarding this fucking program and everything we've been doing. There will be civil riots. People will be trying to make a run on the banks, get their money back, kill fucking politicians. So we got to maintain this for as long as we can until the underground bunkers are ready and we can go all fucking hide like fucking cowards and bitches for stealing people's money and for lying to them for over 100 years. Because they can't get to where they say they've been. They can only do this shit right here. This is all they can do. They got some sort of vehicle up there that's shooting these images. But people, they can't be beyond two to three hundred kilometers. And now I'm, I'm getting to understand, piecing this shit all together, that video, I saw a video whereby one of the astronauts told a, a interviewer when he was asked about how did you get through the 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 uh, Van Allen radiation belts? He says, "Well, we never had to worry about that. We had enough shielding in our capsule." He fucking had no clue. He wasn't even warned about the shit. He wasn't even warned that they were going through some dangerous radiation belts. 
And here, here's my assessment of that. I know, I think I know why this astronaut wasn't warned about the Van Allen radiation belts and they didn't have to have any concern with going through them because they never went through them. And the reason why they never went through them is because right over the South Atlantic, which is they call the South Atlantic anomaly, the Van Allen radiation belt supposedly dipped into the Earth's atmosphere around 200 to 300 kilometers over the surface of the Earth, right above Latin and South America and Brazil. So if the Van Allen radi radiation belts dip down to about two to three hundred kilometers off the coast of Brazil, and the Carmen line is at a hundred kilometers, so three hundred and twenty-eight thousand feet. Feet, two hundred kilometers, another two hundred, another hundred kilometers is six hundred and uh, six hundred and sixty thousand feet. That means that the Apollo missions. They maybe were at 120 kilometers, 130 kilometers, flying in some sort of vehicle, doing maybe a couple of orbits and coming the fuck back down, hiding somewhere, and then going back up in a high altitude, maybe flight, to be have the capsule pushed out of the back of a fucking C-17 or C-130 Hercules, and dropped out on a fucking parachute, because at 120 thousand you know at a hundred at 120 kilometers you know maybe less than that maybe a hundred and fifty thousand feet hundred sixty thousand feet you're not going to see anything dropped out of the back of a fucking airplane you're not even going to hear the airplane you're not even going to hear it you're not even going to see it you're just going to see something coming out of the sky you're going to hear this this fucking sonic boom which you think was a space shuttle coming back into the fucking atmosphere or something else, and then all of a sudden the fucking thing's gonna appear. Come on, I've been talking to people who live on California, they've been hearing these fucking weird ass sonic booms. And we all know they got a fucking huge ass balloon program where they can put these large ass speaker type fucking satellite type devices up there to create all kinds of weird ass sounds. You talking about a simulated environment? Man, we got our own government trying to keep the fucking thing going. Because they don't want us to really see and hear what the fuck is really going on out there. And I mean, as I'm talking to you, looking at this damn video, you got to ask yourself, man. Is the Earth really fucking 25,000 miles in circumference at the equator? I don't fucking think so. I think there is ten times that fucking size. It has to be. And then these guys are doing these lectures lying about where the fuck they are. You saw it for yourself, people. You decide. You want to keep sticking on this shit? You people out there who are heliocentrists, believe in NASA, you love what they do, you, you, you love what your money's going to? Shit. Ask them, hey, you're going to save up some money to go up there on the ISS to see it for yourself and see if they'll let your ass go up there. I don't fucking think so. This fucking thing is in an aquatic training environment. It's that simple. These are high, ultra high altitude videos archived and taken so that they can be used to fuse together with what they see in that training tank and superimpose the earth on the background. There is no no, no manned anything going up into space beyond 328,000 feet. Nothing. They're all fucking robots and unmanned fucking missions. We got the technology to do it. Everything's controlled from the ground. Everything. Yeah, man. I don't know. Let's see what else comes up, man, in the next few days. You you start for yourself right here. Y'all have a good day. Enjoy the video, man, because I know I did.
Take care.